Today I'm going to start installing the autopilot. It's going to take me several days. It is time consuming because you have to install everything in a place that is not going to vibrate and it's going to be a good position. And also the pump is going to take a little bit of time to install because we don't want any leaks on the hydraulics. And I'm going to start with the LCD screen, the controller. I want to mount it right here so that way it looks uniform with all the uh, rest of the equipment. So that's going to be the first time I'm going to do and then later I'll be connecting the wires. All right, I'm going to get started. Before you start drilling anywhere or opening holes, always check the other side. So what I want to do first is put some tape, masking tape, everywhere. That way I don't scratch anything here. Especially these other electronics. We don't want to do any damage to them. Before we start cutting, I want to measure exactly okay, seven eighths, and always use protective gear, especially when you're going to be using a high speed router or anything that could harm your eyes and also your lungs. All right. I tape everything around here, that way there's no dust in the equipment. open I'm just gonna round them out It's perfect. Now I'm gonna take the little protective plate around the LCD screen, but I'm gonna leave the uh, screen protector, that way it doesn't get scratched. So all you have to do is lift up a little bit. And it comes with a silver one. If your electronics are silver, you can use the other one. Remove this piece right here. All you have to do is bring it forward. Put it aside. Looks 100%. Let's place it this way better. Okay, now we're gonna put the unit back in. Perfect. Now I'm going to put the screws in. Okay, everything is secure. Now I'm going to put back the controller. Okay, the controller is installed. I'm going to put the blade on. Perfect. All right, now I'm just gonna remove all this tape. Now 
now I'm going to install the ICU and I'll show you what I'm going to install it but first you have to unscrew these bolts here Don't lose these little screws here put them back where they belong here so this is the ICU and where I'm gonna mount it it's gonna be right here so that way I get the cables from here to the motor that's gonna be sitting right there so I want to have the pump very close to the uh, ICU this is exactly where I want it I want to try to see if it fits all right fits perfect I don't want to tie them yet because I want to do something else I want to put some adhesive in the back here so that way when I place it in here the whole panel is going to be glued to here with some adhesive I'm going to put some alcohol here and connect this tie it real good here this is where the 3m tape is going to go so we want to put alcohol here because it's going to be a little bit of bouncing around right under the uh, pilot house there so definitely we want vibration on this now that I have one layer I'm going to put another layer So that way it reaches all the way to the uh, fiberglass. If you have a boat that doesn't bounce around as much as mine, it will be fine. But my boat really bounces around a lot. So that's gonna help vibration. And before I install it there, of course, Run some alcohol right through here to wipe up any residue. And let it dry. Now I'm going to remove the tape. So now what I want to do is put it right here where the screws are. Position it right through the holes. And then push it back. See right now, this is very strong with the uh, 3M adhesive so that's not gonna fall without no screw but we'll position it with the screws and I'm gonna use the screwdriver for that that's gonna keep that adhesive really stuck to the uh, fiberglass and to the unit all right that's really strong that's installed already Perfect. Now we got a lot of wires that we need to start putting together here. So now I'm going to be attaching the Ctalk five way connector. So I got to make sure where I'm going to put it that all the cables will reach to it. And this will be a great place for it because that way the LCD screen will reach very good here and the rest of the equipment will reach also towards this piece. And of course, to make it stronger, I put some double side uh, 3M tape. And I also put some alcohol here. Okay, now that this is in place, I can connect the middle wire. And there's a locking mechanism once you put this in. There you go that's locks it into place so now the wire for the LCD screen is already connected okay now I'm going to connect the EV sensor it comes with a three foot wire and this had to connect it as far as possible from electronics uh, they prefer three feet and where I want to install it is going to be here facing towards the front of the pilot house front is right there so that's the best place that I can install it without any interference of a compass or anything 
Uh, the compass is about three feet. All right, I'm gonna bring this curtain down. It's exactly where I want it. Okay, so I'm gonna put it over the curtain because I don't wanna cut the curtain and that's gonna work just fine. It's gonna look better that way. So now you need to make sure that it's level. And start drilling the holes. There's three screws that hold this together. The EV sensor sits right up here. And the reason you leave a little bit of room is because you will need to take this off later and adjust it a little bit towards the bow of the boat. And this clips right on top. And that's all there is to it. All right, the base of the EV sensor is already connected. It needs to point exactly to the front of the boat, not to the bow of the boat at the center. It's supposed to be linear forward. And that's what I'm trying to do here. And you can always adjust it if it's needed. All right, so the EV sensor is already pointing where it needs to be pointing straight forward. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the clip back on. Now that it's in place, all I have to do now is pull to the left. There it is, it's locked. So the EV sensor is already in place. It's not gonna fall off, it's pointing forward. It's well positioned away from my electronics, which my electronics are way here in the front. So good position for it. All right, I'm gonna install the CTOC connection here. All right, that wire's locked into place in here and secure it under here really good. Uh, make sure you don't bend this wire too much. So it's very important not to bend it. All right, that's already locked into place. So I got two of the wires in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure this wire right here against the uh, Paneled here. Now I'm going to connect the C talk connection to the rest of the wiring harness, and they have a really good easy method here. Take this plug, and you can go to a more comfortable position and do the connection and just plug it in. All right, the whole harness is already wired up. Now all I gotta do is come in here and just plug it in. That's it. And for security, I use a zip tie right here to secure everything. Now I'm gonna connect the C-Talk with one of these splitters. And the other one goes here. And for here, since we're not gonna use this C-Talk area, came with two plugs for the uh, empty ports we can block them all right see that now it's blocked the other port that needs to be blocked look at this one right here all right that one is blocked already and this here will be for power later to power up the uh, c talk 
and I also need to connect power to the ICU. Okay, that's the wire for the C-talk. Tied it real good up there. And all the wires are very secure there. 90% of my wires attached, only but the electrical wire to supply the uh, motor and the C-talk. But that I want to do at the end. I don't want to have any power in the system. So I'm going to leave that for the end. And I got this at Amazon. I got the uh, hose, hydraulic hoses. Very nice. The only thing I had to go purchase it was three of these uh, for the pump. And they're pipe fitted. You can't tie these hydraulic connections too much. Only two turns because they're pipe fitted. If you tie it too much, like, let me show you here. Once you put it in here and it doesn't want to go anymore, you got to give it two turns. One turn, full turn, and then a second full turn. And it's not going to go all the way in through it because the pipe fitted is shorter in the front, thicker in the back. I don't know if you can see it. So by doing that, if you put it all the way through, you will damage the uh, threads of the pump. So to avoid that, we're going to place it in and make two full turns because they're pipe fitted. Very important. Now I'm going to start the installation of the pump. And the pump, I want to connect it here, somewhere here, pointing up so I can connect the hoses here. And the power cord will reach all the way to the ICU controller. So that's perfect position for the pump. All right, so what we wanna do is take this plastic protector, one at a time. And this is the fittings. They already got a little bit of Teflon, but if you see the Teflon is not right at the edge. You don't want it right at the edge because you don't want no Teflon in the system. I know the manual says not to put Teflon, but I called the company and they told me I could use some. So, so you see how tight fitted it is? Pipe fittings are different because once you put them in, they will stop at that point. Now, you gotta go two turns, completely turns, to tie the fittings. Just one. I'm gonna go all the way to two. Okay, that's two turns, and that's enough. You don't want to go any more than that, because if you do, you will uh, damage the uh, pump head here. I'm going to the next one. So repeat the process on the three of them. I wanted to do it right here, because once I install it, it's a harder position there. All right, so it's very critical we don't get nothing stuck in there and nothing falls inside. I'm gonna put this piece of tape here. It's very critical for the uh, hydraulics not to have nothing inside because if you have some obstruction here, it will damage your pump. All right, so that's protected. I'm gonna install now the pump right over there. Okay, now that the pump is connected, I already went ahead and took this elbow right here, fitting. This elbow fitting comes with a little rubber here. And the ones I got ordered from Amazon came also with a fitting here. This T will go in here like this, and the existing hydraulic will be attached to the bottom of the T. And then from here, I will attach it to the pump. 
Uh, no Teflon required here because if you look in there, um, if you put any Teflon, it will go inside the pump and you don't want that. All right, the reservoir, we're gonna bring it from here, from the bottom, and we're gonna connect it right here, like this. So, I wanna use these straight fitting to connect the, uh, the reservoir fitting here. I'm gonna remove this, so I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of oil coming out of there. Oh, there we go. Oil is very, this oil is very expensive. I believe that quart of this oil, Sea Star, is about uh, 20 to 25 dollars. Very expensive. Connect it now because it's not going to stop on leaking. Okay, and I'm gonna elevate this hose up here. That way it doesn't keep on bleeding. Okay. I'm gonna keep this hose elevated like this. That way I can keep uh, recuperating the uh, oil that is coming out. You can see it's oil here, all the way to here. Now, I want to connect this T right here. And remember this fittings does not need Teflon on them. Then now I can lower this fitting. Loosen the uh, cable here. And connect it here. It doesn't matter where you connect the port side and the starboard side because the computer is going to ask you where is the uh, steering going. So it doesn't matter if it's the port side or the starboard side. It's going to work either way because it's going to be reprogrammed. All right, this is the hose that is going to go to the pump. Now that I have all the hoses except the vent hose connected, I'm gonna connect the vent hose. Now all the oil that came through the vent hose is gonna go inside the pump. See those bubbles coming up? So now what I'm gonna do is attach the hoses down with zip ties, that way they don't move around. Although they're very sturdy, but I always like to secure everything.
Now I'm just gonna wipe off all the residue of oil, whatever dripped here, because once it start bleeding the system, I wanna make sure I don't see any oil. All right, now what I wanna do, I already read some of the instructions of the uh, C Star system and how to heat the system. But before I do that, I wanna connect and get this oil and elevate it. That way bubbles will come out out of the connection here. I'm gonna connect this here first. And this is C Star Hydraulic Recommended Oil. I want to see how can I stand this up here somewhere so that way that oil will come down with gravity and hopefully I can leave it overnight See all the oil that is sticking in? So now what I want to do is I want to puncture the top of the uh, oil container here. And now it's going a lot faster. Now the system is getting oil continuously. Move the steering wheel back and forth. You can see more oil being drawn to the system. Look at all the air bubbles coming out. So I'm just gonna leave it here. So that way by gravity, all those bubbles will come up from the uh, hydraulic lines. Little by little bit, you can see a bubble right there going up. So little by little bit overnight, all the bubbles are going to come up here. So little by little bit, I'm steering the steering wheel to the right and to the left. And you can see bubbles coming out. And the steering system is working. So I just gotta make sure all those bubbles, because you can feel bubbles on the system. See how they're going up? I think this way, all the bubbles will come out because right now I look at the motor and it's moving perfectly maybe just a couple of more bubbles and this will be set all right so a day has gone by and I already took all the bubbles almost from the steering system hardly see any bubbles just little tiny ones so the hydraulic fluid has been sitting there 
for overnight already. So now what I'm gonna do is connect the electrical for the system uh, to the ICU and also to the C-Star connectivity. Okay, now what I wanna do is connect the pump. And in here to connect the motor for A and B, it doesn't matter where you put the A and B. Now I need to connect the main power, and for that. I got 10 gauge threaded wire and it has to be between 8 to 10 gauge. 10 gauge is fine for my use. I am only going about 3 feet away from the electrical panel so it's not that far. And since both wires are going to be white, I'm going to label with tape the color of the wire. That way I know which one's gonna be positive and which is gonna be negative. So in the store they didn't have the 10 gauge fuel block. So what I did is I got 10 gauge contactors and I'm just gonna put the uh, fuse right in between here and I'm gonna make my own fuel block. I got my fuel block here. Any water is gonna splash in this area because it's all covered by windows. So I'm gonna cover this later also with the plastic. But that's my fuel block. But for now, I'm going to take it apart because I don't want the power to be active there. So now I have to run the wire to the main bar, positive and also negative. I'm going to the negative. And this is where my ground is going to go right here. Okay, that's tight enough. And this slot right here. All right. I'm going to get a zip tie and zip tie these cables here. Now that the wiring is done here, I can put this cover back on. Now one last thing that I need to do is power up the C-Star connection, which is this right here. I need to power it up with this cable. And also this requires a five amp fuse holder that I have here. All right, so everything is already connected. I just need to put the fuses so I can get everything powered up. And I still have my hydraulic fluid flowing through there. And this is how it turned out. I got my power wire all the way into the uh, power bar and I also have my C-Star wire powering my C-Star uh, connectivity. Also I place a fuse box here for the uh, connectivity of the C-Star. So now we're gonna connect all the fuses. Hopefully nothing blows up. 
okay that one is in this came with a cover okay something is beeping now I need to connect the other fuse here Connected. Let's see what's going on back here. It says calibration required. Press OK. Okay. I was asking me power boat. All right now to calibrate the system, I have to be on the water. In the next video, part two of the autopilot installation, 